everybody. This is Anna Sabramwitz. Hope you're having a fabulous start of the week. Listen, friends. Um, today I'm going to share with you a, a case study. And this is from um, one of my students. It's going to be uh, so awesome because a lot of you, uh, when either you check out my free training webinar, elearningsecrets.com, or, you know, if you um, basically see something like an interactive story like a broken coworker, one of the things that happens is that a lot of people are uh, confused about, you know, does this work for me? Is this gonna work for my specific context? And that is one of the things we're gonna talk about today. And how one of my students, Talvi, actually leveraged this to create some amazing wins and um, how you can too, because I want you to be successful in this, all right? So if you're here and you're uh, visiting from someplace, Heck yeah, say hello. I love to say your highs and where you guys are visiting from and who's staying up super late sometimes just to watch these. <laughs> All right. So one of the things that people usually uh, have a very uh, interesting question about is, you know, Anna, I do a lot of software training and how do scenarios fit in and where do emotions fit into software training? Like that, what? Because basically when I say interactive story, I mean where somebody is actually, you know, going through a story of a character and the character is experiencing all these challenges and it's emotional and they're like yeah but i'm doing software training it's not really like emotional right it's not like soft skills and i'm like you know what you would be surprised and here's what question i ask i'll always say okay well if it was so easy and if this actually you know if everybody just followed the checklist and uh, and did what they were supposed to do and told people, you know, told the customer what the answer was or uh, said what the, the adjustment was or how come people don't just do that if it's just software? And the problem with that is, is that people don't do certain things because their beliefs, their emotions, their confidence or lack of it gets in the way. So, Talvi, uh, who, she works, uh, she works in an environment where her target audience uh, work in call center. And if you really looked at it from a, like a 30,000 foot view, you would be like, okay, well, this is all software training. And it's crazy because uh, her target audience has to combine like several systems and cross-reference them to actually give the customer accurate data. So you're like, okay, well, that's just training, right? That's just training. What, why do we need a, uh, an emotional scenario that goes through the character, through a journey of a character that helps them realize that there's a, there's a way to do this, uh, a better way or anything else? Why? What she realized, and this is kind of uh, what happens when you start talking to practitioners and you have a vision for it, is that even though these people were uh, well trained uh, at the end of this onboarding session when they first started, one of the things that happened to them is they had, they lacked the confidence to actually tell customers bad news. <laughs> so even though they were doing everything accurately, sometimes they would waffle or one of the things that would also happen is that they would make these small little decisions that in the moment uh, made almost zero impact on their lives and their performance. Like, you know, if you're working at a call center and there's 300 people in the queue and you hang up on a couple of them, you probably aren't going to notice, right, uh, the, the repercussions of that, especially if you're fresh. But what she realized is that this scenario approach with this story wrapped up could give her an edge and could give them an edge before they hit uh, the before they hit the floor and started talking to real customers, right? So there's a couple of things that it did. As they were learning the systems, all of a sudden now they could experience these systems all together in the context of a real uh, customer. And, and also she could focus on, she went to the, she went to the team that does the quality assurance and she was actually able to pull from them data about where people make the most emotional mistakes. And really this comes through, it's like if our procedures are clear and they're easy to find and there's job aids and performance support and people still aren't doing it, we gotta look at the emotional aspect. We gotta look at confidence, beliefs, uh, pressure, social pressure, all those things that happen. And so she looked at that, she said, okay, I can, I can tie this into 
uh, a character who is now going to be making some assumptions as they go along, uh, being frustrated maybe by certain things that are happening to her, feeling social pressure to be either really efficient or do a really good job, but where is that happy middle? So she was able to do that for that learner, even though this is traditionally software training and you just, you know, follow tick boxes and and then as you interact with the customer, you're just supposed to straight up give them the answer and be like, this is the answer. Nobody does that, right? We're humans, we're new, we're tentative, we're, we, we don't know it all. So that's what was fantastic about uh, this approach. The other thing uh, that she was able to do with these, um, with these situations is also reinforce certain behaviors. Because one of the things that happens uh, when you have people come in, um, especially in the customer service sector, if you're looking for experienced people already, they're probably coming in with assumptions, right? They've probably already worked in other customer service areas. They probably have some old dogmas, old beliefs, or about things about sales. All, like people come in with a whole load of you know stuff, right? And so one of the things that she really wanted to do is to challenge some of those assumptions because this organization does things differently. And so the way she could do that is instead of saying, you're not doing this the right way, which immediately puts people's guard up, right? Like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm pretty pro at this. Why are you challenging me? By putting them in a position where they could evaluate another judge, which is easy to do, judge another person and judge that person's decisions and options, they could maybe reflect on their own. And she guided that process of reflection as they're making decisions as this other character so that they could get the ahas, be like, hmm, I wonder if I'm doing that, or I thought that was the right answer, but that didn't turn out the way I wanted it to or thought it would. Hmm, I wonder if I need to double check on that. And the other thing that this is brilliant about scenarios and uh, these situations is that, like I mentioned before, sometimes you'll have people who, um, or not people, the situations that like where we take some actions, the cause and effect relationship is not clear to us. And what happens is for some of us, we will uh, keep on executing the same action over and over and over, but because the effect is so far removed or happens kind of away from us, we never actually make the link. Or when we make the link, it is too far, far too gone for us to, to really, you know, correct our actions, right? Uh, so one of the things she was able to do is um, if they were performing some actions where they in, in the real life, they wouldn't necessarily get the uh, feedback right away. But on the back end, it actually costs the company a lot of money. If those are costly mistakes that people are removed from the consequence, she's able to actually address that behavior right there. Because in the, in the scenario world, you're able to manipulate that universe, right? It's yours and you're able to create the consequences right away. Show them the consequences right away instead of six months from now. So that's pretty cool. Like imagine if, you know, you were uh, trying to dissuade somebody from smoking and you showed them lung cancer right after they smoked the first cigarette. Boom, right? <laughs> of course, that doesn't happen. <laughs> so um, that's really the benefit of those scenarios. And the other thing is that you know, that confidence building about the fact that you've now gone through some of the most challenging situations in a safe place, seen what happens and seen the fact that, you know, sometimes giving people stuff they don't want to, you know, information they don't necessarily want to hear won't necessarily, you know, won't be the end of the world. Yes, you'll deal with it. And, and then you'll be commended for being honest and truthful, you know, and that's what she wanted to reinforce is that making mistakes and also uh, being honest and truthful is is a good thing and you don't have to be afraid of it. But you know, we can say that and of course, it's easy for everybody to say that, but to actually see it play out and go over experience that anxiety of making of saying something that somebody will get upset about is actually, you know, pretty difficult. So if you can help facilitate that, why not? Isn't that awesome? So I just wanted to share that with you because I think that, you know, we underestimate how we can use um, stories and scenarios to actually influence um, how people think and how people respond to even doing the mundane tasks of 
you know, doing uh, following check boxes in the software. So this is where, you know, th this is where it adds value. And I wanted to contextualize that for you. If you are doing software training and you're like, well, why do people still make mistakes? Or how come they're finding it difficult to connect the software training that we're doing to how you use this in context and how you leverage those resources when you're interacting with a customer, right? So those are the things that you can really do here. Now, if you want to learn more about uh, this kind of approach, or if you want to see more examples, because a lot of people are like, hey, yeah, okay, okay, I get it software, but this is my context. Uh, if you go to elearningsecrets.com, I have a case study there. And I basically go through probably, I don't know, 14, 15 examples of where you can use this successfully. And those are live, like real examples. They're not made up from some book. They're actually examples that organizations and I and my clients have built to help um, to help people make the transition from, you know, uh, I think I know everything or I'm not sure to, whoa, hey, this is, uh, this is different than I thought or give me some ahas. And I think I, I, okay, I want more info. Tell me what, you know, tell me what is next because I'm, I'm in that zone where I'm like, ah, I'm ready to learn more. That's really where you want people, right? So that's, that's what was cool is, uh, you can leverage this, uh, this kind of journey for somebody to actually emotionally connect them with the outcome and say, Hey, uh, this is, this means something to me. It's not just plain old, you know, uh, info. It's, this is actually useful. I can see it. Why? Because I've gone through these situations and now they make sense to me. So yes. And Jack's here. Um, so here's a, a question. Uh, wouldn't you design the scenarios looking at the emotions ahead of time? Is that what you're getting to? Because after all, we experience a life through our emotions. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, one of the things that, um, what happens when you mix, when you mix storytelling and scenarios, is that if you just leave it at scenarios, uh, what happens? It just becomes a, it just becomes another multiple choice question, even if there's a consequence, right? Because you don't care. Like it's just, um, you know, it's just a, an interaction uh, with nothing at stake. But if you uh, create a character uh, that is invested in that journey and they have something to gain and there's a transformation that they need to make, then every time you present uh, scenario and a character, or you present that character with a scenario, then something's at stake, right? And something happens. Um, because, um, those are, if, if you, if you do emotionally connect with, uh, that character and their journey, uh, then what happens is the propensity for you to actually finish, uh, that story and want to help that person succeed is, is a good thing right? Um, it's kind of like when you start a movie and if they've, they, you know, they form, follow the formula, right? And it's the same formula we're using. We're using the Pixar formula. You know, there's a character, they want something and something's in the way. There's variations on that theme, but it's kind of like that. Um, what happens is, you know, if somebody crafts that well, you will stay up and watch that movie just to see how it ends. That's exactly what we're trying to go for here. We're hacking into the natural propensity of our brains to want to close that loop. And there's so many things there that, that really help us, right? We're practicing in a safe place. We're connecting with somebody who's a character and we watch their transformation. We're selling that person's success to our learners. Look at, this could be you, right? Uh, we're also um, giving them the satisfaction of success and selling them on that before they even have done anything other than answered a bunch of questions, right? So it's awesome. Like they're getting that, that buzz of the win before they even get there, which is so cool. Um, so there's like lots of lots of little pieces that fall into this. And um, what's wonderful is that, you know, we can say, let's gamify this, let's do that. But if you just leverage story, a really solid story and a really com contextual scenarios together, any gamification elements you add on top, it's just like, it's like massive fuel on this pilot light. Like you gotta have a strong pilot light. And actually one of the things that Talvi did is, this is so cool. So she has a tight story, lots of really good uh, contextuals, uh, these pearls that we call them scenarios. And then she decided to add a karma meter. And we use the karma meter uh, and it's, you have to be nuanced about when you're using it. So a karma meter tells you how you're doing, right? 
and she wanted to reinforce the idea of between customer satisfaction and, and efficiency. And so she would have that displayed right as they made a decision to have them consider how each of their actions would uh, be uh, perceived, let's say, by the, uh, by the either the customer or the Q&A team, but also without taking them out of the story and without giving them uh, immediate feedback with giving them immediate feedback, but it was very subtle. So these gamification elements can be added on depending on your specific needs and context. So it's it's really cool. And if, if this is something that you're like, oh my God, this sounds awesome. And I've seen Broken Coworker or I haven't, or I've been to the webinar and it sounds awesome. Um, let's talk because I'm looking for a couple more awesome people to join our community. And I wanna make sure that the right people get in because we're producing things. This is just, it's so awesome in there. People are sharing their projects, getting some seriously awesome feedback and creating some seriously awesome memorable experiences for, for people to go through and actually impact, you know, their behavior, which is what we're all going for. Right? So I'll put the link underneath the video, uh, jump on a call with me. We'll talk about where you want to take yourself and see if I can help you. So, uh, let me see. Oh, and Evangelina says, I love the idea of one character across the course to identify with. Yeah, and you gotta set that up right. It's not just about calling that person John and John's, look, it's John again. No, we gotta care about John, right? So you gotta create a compelling character, but I'm glad that resonated with you. Now, if you enjoyed this, share it. If you have any more questions, I'm here, post your questions in the comments. And thank you so much for stopping by. This was absolutely fun and I hope you have a fabulous rest of the week. I will see you here tomorrow. Bye.